welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 46, Letting Go of Shame. I used to feel shame around my shyness. Being shy made me want to hide, and hiding made my shyness feel shameful somehow. I remember thinking to myself, this hiding behavior is selfish, makes me uncomfortable, makes other people uncomfortable. So when I was 14, I made a deliberate choice to stop hiding. I made a goal to say hi to 10 people I knew from class every day. That was actually very hard. (laughs) It's funny to me right now to think about how hard that was to just take my hand and say hi to 10 people that I recognized from class. After I did that for a few days, people started coming up to me and talking to me, and I became less afraid of being seen. It's been, what, 34 years since then? And the rest is history. I have trained myself to interact with people in a much better way than I used to. So what causes shame? When we want to hide who we are or what we've done, we are experiencing shame. Shame as a result of feeling like not only did we make a mistake, but we are a mistake. A good way to hold on to shame is to keep it secret, stay silent, and then judge ourselves. Brene Brown talks about shame resilience. People with high shame resilience are people who know how to acknowledge and move through the shame. She says they know what their triggers are. Some people feel shame over money, how they spend, how they don't save, etc. I was listening to a Jodi Moore coaching session where she said she used to have so much shame over spending. One day she bought a really cute swimming suit and she didn't want her husband to know because she literally had 10 other really cute swimming suits. She said she used to feel this kind of shame over spending all the time until she decided not to do that to herself. She decided that if she had already spent the money, instead of shaming herself, she would thank herself for something fun for the summer. And she would think things like, isn't it great? I bought a cute swimsuit I feel pretty in. (laughs) She allowed herself to make the choice to spend money instead of berating herself for doing it. And that actually decreased her spending. When we stop resisting, things always get better. Also, have you noticed there's this weird shame cycle sometimes where you do something you're ashamed of, like buy something you don't need, and then you'll feel bad, so you buy something else you don't need, and then you just compound the shame. It's a very human, very normal thing to do. So we can feel shame over spending, over what we eat, our appearance, how we think and feel about things. Some people feel shame over things in parenthood or working or not working. There are endless possibilities for shame in our lives, unfortunately. <laughs> and we all feel shame sometimes. Shame is dirty pain, pain that we create for ourselves. It's not the kind of pain we actually want to feel. We want to feel clean pain, like sorrow for someone else's suffering or grief over death. Shame is not clean pain. Therefore, it's helpful to get rid of it. So how do we release shame? Number one, first, be aware. Do you notice when you're feeling shame? What does shame feel like for you? For me, an unsettled kind of pit in my stomach helps me notice that I'm feeling shame. Once you've noticed that shame, one clue is that you don't want anyone to know this thing ever. Then you go to number two. Number two is give yourself grace. Talk to yourself like you would talk to a beloved friend or family member. How many times do we call ourselves stupid or incompetent or failures? We would never, ever say these sorts of things to our loved ones or even to strangers, right? What would you say to someone you love who is feeling the shame you feel? Talk to yourself with an abundance of love and grace. Number three, write about it. Take your journal or a piece of paper and write what you're feeling. Write about why you feel that way. Describe what happened and don't be afraid to add all the details. Write until all the thoughts and feelings you've kept hidden in your head are now on paper. Then read them to yourself. Read them aloud if you feel like it. Allow yourself to keep the words or not. You don't have to keep these words. The processing happens in the act of writing and reading it afterwards. If you feel like it, rip those words up or burn them. Whatever feels right. Number four, talk to someone you trust. This is when you have to be brave and say the thing, the thing that is causing so much shame. As a therapist, many times people have told me things they're very ashamed of when they 
finally tell me, I'm able to help them realize why what they did was totally normal, something not to be ashamed of, and actually exactly what a healthy person would do in their circumstances. Number five, tell your story. Shame cannot survive being spoken and being met with empathy. After you tell your story to someone you trust and your shame falls away, consider sharing your story with other people. What you share may be exactly what that person needs to hear. Your experience may be what helps that person to allow themselves to release their shame. So, as you go about your life, shed your shame like it's easy to let it go. Imagine you're a tree, a beautiful tree, standing tall with your arms high. And your shame is an autumn leaf. It's easy to hide behind. But it's served its purpose. It can crumple and fall to the ground now. And you can continue to stand tall without any leaves of shame hiding your true, glorious, magnificent self. Just allow yourself to be the youest you you can be. Be bold. Be dauntless and free. Be shameless. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.